Hi, I'm Lisa. I uh, specify, specialize in uh, power apps uh, and uh, power uh, point, as we can clearly see. So I call myself an architect. Most important thing about me is I'm a colorful person. Um, very important shade of pink for me is FF69. Before that is hot pink. That is the color that you will see a lot today. My session today is about how to create a web part that populates uh, SharePoint lists with um, SVGs. And you will need to know that this dyno uh, here on the screen uh, plays a very important role in that demo. So keep a lookout for it. Okay, so what are SVGs? So SVGs are scalable vector graphics. It's basically just XML code, and we can define vector-based graphics with that. They are super small in size, but we, if we want to scale them, we can easily do that without any quality loss, like you experience that with uh, PNGs or JPEGs, and they work in all browsers. So what I wanted to achieve is I wanted to take an SVG, and put that into kind of a funnel. And then I wanted to output a JSON code snippet that would be accepted by a SharePoint lists column as a format. Usually there's a super tedious manual process to do that. And that involves, you need to download an SVG, you open that in add, you open the dev tools, you select the first line, you right click then add it as HTML, you will select everything, uh, you save that somewhere, and then you would need to extract all of these colors over here and all of the um, path values. And then you would need to wrap that into the correct JSON format. And I am super lazy, so I did not want to do this over and over and over again because that is just like super tedious and I'm too lazy for that. So the correct JSON format that we would need, I put a screenshot in here, that will be we define a div and inside of that div we have an SVG with a view box. So that defines where we are looking at and how big we are. And then we have a um, path element in the children and we put the um, D, so the path of that stroke that we just uh, looked at of that SVG and the fill color in the styles. And we do this over and over and over again so long that we just like have all of these strokes that comprise the SVG. But watch out, they can really be lengthy and they can really be a lot, just like depending on how complex your SVG is. So I felt there needed to be a better way. And just for my purposes, because I wanted to do something in the list, I built this super simple Node.js app. So, and that was just vanilla JavaScript, but it worked, but it only worked on my machine. And we're not shipping my machine. So I felt like it's maybe a good idea to have everyone benefit from that. So I put that on a website um, and everyone could now um, just input their SVG files and get the JSON code for their, um, for their SharePoint list. Then I thought this needs to be a web part. And I will quickly show you how I, um, how I did this. So what I do here, obviously I prepared this Dino SVG for us. This is the website. And if I just like drag and drop this over here, it will display me this XML code, which I desperately need. But you can see there are just like a lot of numbers. So this is just like the fill colors. And all of that is here, all of these D paths. And they can really, really, really be long. So the only button that I have will just like not do the magic over here. And if I open up this file, you can see that. That is exactly the structure that I told you about. So we have the view box, and then we have all of these D paths here, and then we have the um, fill in the um, style object, and we do this over and over and over again. And that makes the format for the SharePoint list color. Mm -hmm. So quickly back to our demo. I thought, why not put that as a web part directly in SharePoint? And my second question was, how hard can it be? And obviously, these are very famous last words. And as a disclaimer, this is my very, very first web part. So I never built a web part before. So um, please be kind when I um, demo this now. What you need to know is for a web part, I do not want employees to just like have any SVG, but I wanted to provide a library with approved SVGs. For the sake of it, obviously, 
I will show them to you. So we have this little dino, but we have others as well. But it could be logos, it could be anything, but I needed to motivate myself to deal with that. So um, these are rather uh, nice um, SVGs right now. So what we would do is, um, let me republish this. Very good. We can now select an SVG file over here, and these obviously are the same ones. And I will select the dyno here again. So I get the little preview and I can now convert that and copy that to my clipboard because it does not make any sense to download this for now because I only need this to be copied to my clipboard if I wanted to take that for further code manipulation, for example, in my code editor. But what I can also do is I can now select a site, a list and a column and apply that format directly to a column of my choosing. So right here, I have a list on my site tech. It's called process. I have a title over here. It is the 42 and I want to format uh, this column demo over here. So what I will do is I will select that. that. So I have the tech, I have the process, and I'll select demo. I'll say apply column formatting and would open up obviously the um the new tab here so that I can exactly validate what I did before. So let's have a look um, how this is built. I created obviously the web part itself and then I added functionality and I quickly realized well this is going to be super lengthy so I quickly learned how to divide up my uh, web parts into a parent component, which would rather be the orchestrator, and then into several uh, child components, which, will, which would then just like take care of, um, of the different uh, features that I wanted to add. And I also learned how um, dealing with uh, React hooks would work so that I could just like clean my code a little bit and also reuse the things that I already did. Uh, we have the SVG input. This is uh, fetching the uh, files from the library, which is done uh, with the uh, reactor. The um, SVG output, which is our preview. The convert button that takes care of converting and copying. The site selector, list selector, and column selector, which are all the drop down menus, which also use our uh, reactor. And also then the final apply button, which will finally apply the JSON uh, format to the uh, selected column of the list on the site uh, that the user wanted that to be. What I tried to do is use PMPJS because at first I did not, and then I realized how hard I was making that for myself, and with it, it was way easier. Second thing is using hooks whenever possible because I like it if the logic is just like outside of what I uh, wanted to do so that this was just like way more reusable for me. And then no hard, hard coded values anywhere so that I could apply this for a multi-language as well because at least my customers, I'm from Germany, we don't speak English. So that would just like make uh, things uh, more easy. And then I really wanted to have good documentation just like to do a service for our community and future me. Uh, I would like to give you a little bit of a code tour. Let's go like this over here. Here we go. So obviously we would start in the README file because it just like gives us all the information that we need, including the uh, lovely mermaid di diagram that you just like saw right now. Um, the next thing is um, I made a property pane so that the user would uh, be able to de define a site URL and a library name. And that obviously needs some improvements so that we have just like more than basic data validation in here, but that I, oh, sorry, but that I, I could reuse uh, the hooks um, that I already talked about for the site and the, um, uh, the list. Next thing, come on. Next thing would be um, we um, we did the um, parent component that would then just like orchestrate just like all the other um, UI elements that uh, we can see here. Next part is the SVG input that uh, is the uh, drop down menu for the um, SVG files that uses um, a hook that is called use SVG files hook. That is what we do in here. 
So we just uh, fetch all the files um, from the library name and the site URL that we defined in the property pane. The next thing is our convert button. So that is just like the heart of it. Um, so we need to extract all the D and all the fill attributes from the SVG code and wrap that into the format that the SharePoint list would expect. And we do this right over here. And obviously we also set a size and get just like um, a fallback color if we um, sometimes in SVGs, the fill color is not present. So we need to have a fallback color for that as well. The next part that we need to cover would be the site selector. The site selector calls a hook that um, will query all the available site collections. And I do this um, right over here. And then we need to have uh, the list selector. The list selector will display only the lists that are first um, available on that site collection. So there's already that. And then we just like exclude um, some of the uh, lists because um, those are the, the built-in lists that we do not want to open for uh, custom formatting. At least I didn't want to do this, so I excluded those. And um, finally, in the column selector, I again use a hook. It's the use fetch fields um, hook um, to get all the columns that are in the um, in the list that we uh, selected previously. And last but not least, we finally apply the format that we created in the list, in the column, in the list, on the site. And then obviously we um, open uh, that list so that we uh, can validate uh, the format immediately. OK, back to the uh, slides. here so we did the code tour so now i have a question for you uh, please help a newbie out because i need a lot of good advice for better code and better docs and all the tips and tricks that community might have for me because i want to improve because that was my very first one and although i'm pretty proud that i made a web part i know that i can still learn a lot of that and uh, i feel sharing is caring applies here as well and with that thanks <music>